there are three periods during the 60 seconds where there is non-zero resulting force. Non-zero resulting force means there must be acceleration in the object or the moving object. So the first period was we saw that from t is equal to 0 to 10 seconds we could see that there was an increasing gradient which means the bus was accelerating. So when the acceleration is happening it means there is non-zero resulting force. Secondly from t is equal to 35 to 40 seconds we saw that speed was decreasing so the object was decelerating. It means there was a non-zero resulting force which was stopping the bus or decreasing its speed. And then uh, we were given with the information that the bus travels around uh, a circular curve between t is equal to 21 to t is equal to 24 seconds. So during this time, the bus was moving uh, or going through a curve. So when an object is going through a curve, it is uh, following a part of the circular part uh, or the circular path on which it is moving. And when something is moving in a circle, the resultant force is always directed towards the center of the circle or it is perpendicular to the motion or the direction of movement. So this question says, a bus leaves a bus stop at t is equal to zero and travels along a horizontal road until it reaches a second bus stop. Figure 7.1 is the distance time graph for the bus between t is equal to zero and t is equal to 60 seconds. So in the graph we can see that there is distance on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, so it is a distance time graph. Here the bus is leaving the first stop and uh, here the bus has reached the second bus stop and after which the graph has straightened or become horizontal. So means the value of the distance is not changing and when it is not changing it means the bus is not moving. Okay, the road on which the bus is traveling is straight except for a short curved section. So almost all the road is straight which means the direction of the bus would not be changing except for a short curve section. The bus travels around this circular curve between t is equal to 21 to t is equal to 24 seconds. So this is where uh, the direction of the bus would have been changing. Describe how the motion of the bus between t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 10 seconds differs from its motion between t is equal to 35 and t is equal to 40 seconds. Now if we look in the at the first portion, this is the first portion. So we can see that we have a curve over here and this curve is of increasing gradient. So uh, in a distance time graph, we know that the gradient represents the speed of the object. So when we have an increasing gradient means speed is increasing and when the speed increases we have acceleration in the body. So it is the accelerated movement. Now if we look at the uh, graph at t is equal to 35 to 40 seconds it is again a curve but this time it is a decreasing gradient curve. So it means that gradient or the speed must be decreasing. And when the speed is decreasing, we have deceleration in the moving object. So this is uh, how we can explain their difference. We have to write a three mark answer over here. So I'm writing between t is equal to zero and t is equal to 10 seconds we have a curve of increasing gradient which means speed is increasing and bus 
is accelerating. Between t is equal to 35 and t is equal to 40 seconds, there is a curve of decreasing gradient so speed is decreasing and the object is decelerating so this is a two mark answer now there is a third mark so we have to write another point so the third point could be it starts from rest and speeds up between t is equal to 0 to 10 seconds and it ends up being at rest at t is equal to 40 seconds as the graph became perfectly horizontal um, when the bus reached a t is equal to 40 second mark and in the initial portion it is starting at rest so initially uh, there was a horizontal portion in the graph and then it started increasing so means that it started to speed up from uh, after starting from rest the next part says determine the maximum speed of the bus during these 60 seconds now the maximum speed is shown by the maximum gradient and the maximum gradient is when the graph is having this straight line portion now for finding the maximum speed we could consider any two points on this graph for example this point uh, it has a x coordinate of 20 and y coordinate of 180 similarly this point has an x coordinate of 30 and y coordinate of 300 so we could use these two points find the gradient of this line and that gradient would show us the maximum speed of this moving bus so i'm noting it down here now m is equal to or the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 so this would become 300 minus 180 divided by 30 minus 20 it is 120 upon 10 answer is 12 meters per second so the maximum speed that the bus obtained was 12 meters per second the average speed of the bus between leaving the first bus stop and arriving at the second bus stop now uh, we have to find the average speed between leaving the first bus stop and arriving at the second bus stop now the time for leaving the first bus stop is t is equal to zero seconds and the time for arriving at the second bus stop is t is equal to 40 seconds so we can see that the bus left the first bus stop at this moment and reached the second bus stop at this moment so there is an interval of 40 seconds between these two things secondly if we check out the total distance covered by the bus then it would be this much so it is a value of 390 uh, meters or the distance was 390 first i would be writing the formula and this would be average speed of an object is equal to total distance divided by the total time total distance is 390 divided by the total time of 40 so it becomes 9.75 or uh, i could round it off to 9.8 meters per second so the average speed of the bus during this journey was 9.8 meters per second state how velocity differs from speed so velocity is 
a vector while speed is a scalar scalars do not have any direction velocity being a vector has a direction also there are three periods during the 60 seconds where there is non zero resulting force non zero resulting force means there must be acceleration in the object or the moving object when the resultant force is zero there is no acceleration in the moving object so there is a non zero resultant force acting on the bus complete the statements to indicate these three time periods and state the direction of the resultant force in that period so the first period was we saw that from t is equal to 0 to 10 seconds we could see that there was an increasing gradient which means the bus was accelerating so when the acceleration is happening it means there is non zero resulting force secondly from t is equal to 35 to 40 seconds we saw that speed was decreasing so the object was decelerating it means there was a non zero resulting force which was stopping the bus or decreasing its speed and then uh, we were given with the information that the bus travels around uh, a circular curve between t is equal to 21 to t is equal to 24 seconds so this becomes t is equal to 21 and this becomes t is equal to 24 so during this time the bus was moving uh, or going through a curve so when an object is going through a curve it is uh, following a part of the circular part uh, or the circular path on which it is moving and when something is moving in a circle the resultant force is always directed towards the center of the circle or it is perpendicular to the motion or the direction of movement so we are going to mention these three parts here between t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 10 seconds the direction of the resultant force is forwards because it is accelerating or we could write it down as in the direction of the movement of the bus so the direction in which the bus is moving in the same direction a resultant force is acting between t is equal to 21 seconds and t is equal to 24 seconds the direction of the bus is perpendicular to the direction of movement the bus is moving with a constant speed but the direction of movement is changing so since it is going through a curve like this so if the bus is moving in this direction along the tangent at any instant the force would be acting at a perpen perpendicular so there would be a 90 degree angle between the direction of the force and the direction of movement or the velocity of the object between t is equal to 35 seconds and t is equal to 40 seconds the direction of the force is backwards because the object is decelerating or we could write it down in the opposite direction of the movement so opposite to the direction of movement this could also be written or simply backwards would be uh, the answer the complete answer which should earn us complete marks during the journey the air resistance acting on the bus varies state why the air resistance changes during the journey so air resistance is dependent on the speed of movement of an object when the speed is changing the air resistance is also going to change so the reason is that speed of the bus changes that is why 
the air resistance also changes. On figure 7.1, mark and label with an M a time when the air resistance is a maximum value. So it is a maximum when the speed is maximum and the speed is maximum during 10 seconds to 35 seconds. So anywhere during this, we have to mark a point M. So for example, I'm marking it over here M and uh, during this period, the speed is maximum. So the air resistance acting on the bus would also be maximum. 